Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm back with a little share. I was doing something and I thought, wait a minute, I may not have told people about this. But before we start, um, ignore the sunshine, it keeps coming and going, I can't control it. Um, and I wanted to make this video while I'm in the process of doing something else. Let's put this to one side. So, as a lot of you know, I do gel printing, I do art, I do lots and lots of different things. And some of the things I do are, I do um, artist trading cards or ATCs. This is my process box. Basically, this is where things start. This is sort of where they get backed onto cards so they're nice and clean. Um, this bit they've had, I usually put a layer of clear gesso on top of them so I can do pencil work and like these are in the process of being done further. So as you can see, I do do ATCs or artist trading cards. So put that out of the way. Um, I also do um, arty postcards, which is one of my favorite things to do as well. Um, my process here is I have blanks. I then have the first layers of stuff. Then I will choose them and then maybe add a few more layers to them. And then when I get to the get to the very final stage, then they go to the final and then they will go into an album. And I've got an album for my ATCs as well. So I was planning on doing some more backgrounds. And I just wanted to have a little word and say there's something I may not have told you. Now, those who are my subscribers are very familiar with the fact that I will very often sit around and I will make, well, here's some that are in process on the desk. Um, I will just make postcard backgrounds, go straight in and do them. I will turn out with blank ATCs and just create artist trading cards. However, there is another method I use to create backgrounds, which you may also find interesting or useful because sometimes I have offcuts, I have scraps, I've got rollouts and I like to harvest parts of them for images. So looking at a few things here, so this is just a pile that I'm going to work on today. So these are, that's not big enough for a postcard, these, these are from my scrap bin, okay? I have a scrap bin that is just full of offcuts from my gel printing. I've got another scrap bin for plain papers another one for printed papers. I tend to segment stuff. So as you can see, I've got a whole pile of stuff here. Um, these are just offcuts of gel prints. Then I've got some roll off sheets that are basically just on bits of white paper that I've had hanging around. So that's those. And then these are some gel prints that haven't quite made the grade. Um, they're okay. They would probably take a few more layers of printing. I mean, that one's quite close. However, when I look into it, I like things that I see within it. And what I very often do is if I'm on a making session or a mass make to make um, more postcards or more ATCs, these could obviously be ephemera. These could be toppers. They could be anything you like. I, I'm tending to make these today. I tend to have a couple of little picture frames. Now this is probably not a good idea showing them to you on a black background. So I'm just going to pull in this ceramic plate just so you can see them up against them. So I've made these and this was a trick that I learned from when I used to do quite a bit of photography because I'd have this and I'd hold it up against a scene and then I would go oh that's roughly what I want because sometimes when you look at a big picture there is so much to take in, you can't look at the nice things within it. So now for me, um, an artist trading card or an ATC is two and a half inches by three and a half inches. If I've got my metric right, it's 20, uh, 64 millimeters by 89 millimeters. So I've cut that as an aperture out of some black card. And this is what I use for that. Now, postcards can come in a myriad of sizes. Um, the size of my postcards pretty much dictated by the size of the album, I keep them in the pockets. So mine are five and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inches, or 145 millimeters by 105 millimeters. Now, saying that, you can decide whatever size you want a postcard to be. That just works for me. I will then buy um, either bulk postcards if I find them in those dimensions, or I'll just buy sheets of white card and I'll cut them myself, which to be honest with you, is the most economical way to do them. So how do I use this? Right, let's start, because I honestly do need to do some before I carry on the rest of the day. So let's just 
let's just bring in this piece. Okay, this piece is an offcut. Okay, it I covered a um, what are they called? A composition notebook in it a while ago, and it's an offcut. Now, if I pull in my postcard one, I can now see I could get at least one postcard out of there. I might even get a postcard and an ATC. But I like to look through this because, and you'll see when we look at the 12 by 12s, it eliminates everything out of my view. So I can move this around and go, well, what's the most interesting part of this? Or is there even an interesting part that I want to work with? I'm not particularly liking that bit there. But if I do that, that's much more interesting. Um, for me, I'm not 100% certain this makes a good enough postcard, but all of my postcards would start off and then be developed further. So I've got this, I'll get myself a pencil, and now I'm only lightly drawing around the inside of the box because the thing I need to remember is I'm drawing around the inside of this frame, which means this line is on the inside of these dimensions. So when I cut them, I will cut this using the dimensions, not the drawn line, and then erase that afterwards. Otherwise, everything's going to get a bit smaller. Now, if I look at this, there is a trading card in here somewhere. Again, I'm avoiding that bit, so I don't mind that. And because I can change it in whatever orientation I want it to be, I quite like that, actually. I think that'll do and I'm just going to come in this is just a soft pencil and I've just drawn lines off so we'll go back to those in a minute um, this one I think is too small for a postcard it is is there anything on there I really really love if there isn't anything I really really love it can go straight back into the scrap box but I quite like some of the sections of this but maybe not enough. Right, that one's going back. I'm not going to harvest every single thing if I just... See, that's not... Mm, it's just about postcard size, but it's not enough for me. I quite like this bit here. It's good to be able to move this around so I can actually audition pieces. I think I like it this way, actually. I think that will work for me. Come in, so just draw that around here. So all I'm doing is utilizing scraps. And the reason I like to do this is, I like that one when I pulled it out of the box, but I don't like it anymore. So I'm quite happy to put that back in the scrap box. Again, a piece like this, you would think, what am I gonna do with the brayer? Well, it's too small for this, but if I was to use it like this, all of a sudden, I've got an ATC that could have a beach theme about it. You'll probably get more than one out of this to be honest with you so let's take that one out of there i think that's enough from that i don't work my way through everything and go oh, i simply have to have this i have to have that no if it's not 100 percent working for me actually no that isn't working for me and and this is my process so i'm going to continue to go through now this one i pulled out because this is an example of it's quite boring as a whole but if i come in and isolate elements see that's quite a nice element it's not my style not really wanting it as a postcard but it's a good example to show you um this one again on the whole not great but the moment i isolate sections of it i might find something that all of a sudden actually there that kind of appeals to me. What's that mark on there? Okay. That would kind of appeal to me because with my ATCs and postcards, I tend to build on top of them. So now this one, okay. Um, this was part of a 12 by 12 I created. I took a section of it out and this was left. Now for me, this, this is a little bit too much. However, if I was to go in my postcard thing, I might be able to pull elements out of it probably it's the ATC that's going to be more interesting for me here. Now that's quite a dominant amongst that. Can I pull something out? I could. Am I going to put the effort in to get it? No. It'll just go back into scrap box. Right, let's look at, these are the Brayer off sheets. Now these are some of my favourites. Now let's just rub that out the back. 
Um, let's do them one at a time so I can curl up. So this is purely just a brayer or sheet. However, the moment I do something like this, it becomes a piece of art. Not that it wasn't a piece of art to start with, but I would use that. So I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to come in with my pencil, take that down. That's another one ready for cutting. This one has got some really cute bits. This is a bit dark. I think the patterns would look better if I was using ATC size. I just need to find find the image within it and that for me is probably the image within it. Quite like that up there, that's a bit grungy. It's just finding that bit that your eye rests upon and goes I really like that and I think I'm going to put that one in. Worst case scenario, if I don't like them when they're cut, they just go back in back into the scrap box. I think that's the only one I'm going to pull off there. This one again, right, I quite like that. Let's see if I can get a postcard of that. Now, when I cut these, and I think I've already said this, but I'll say it again, it's worth saying. It, when I cut these out, um, they're not finished anyway. Because my next stage is then, I usually develop a postcard or an ATC by using colored pencils, texture pastes, different techniques. So that's giving me a postcard of that one. This one's quite nice, I like in this. Bet you this isn't a post uh, isn't a postcard, but oh, I don't know. I could be proved very very wrong. That's that's interesting. Not interested in that bit in there. Maybe I come off. Got some something stuck on there, so maybe I won't do postcard. Maybe I'll do the ATC. Quite liking the way that's encroaching on that. So that's one. And this is just paper that would be sat in my scrap box, unused. That's an interesting one. Hmm. Sometimes there's something there and it's only when you isolate it do you see it. No, I'm not going to play around with that one. This one, however, is way cute. And it's a good example of, OK, I was braying in a weird direction, but I can now move my frame so that it's no longer offset. It's actually lined up again. So let's take that chunk out of there. Um, there's probably not enough left on there to actually give me um, an ATC. Why didn't that come out on the side? Did I my pencil not? leave a good mark. Oh, it is there, but I've just not really seen it. Okay, I'll find that out when I cut it. Okay, let's now I'm not going to do all of the 12 by 12s because it would be mind numbingly boring. But I'm gonna I'll leave that one because I think there's other stuff in there. I'm going to look at these two maybe. Now for me, there's a couple of obviouses in here. This is from when I did my um, what was it called? Oh, good grief, it's completely gone out of my mind. Franken stencil um, video. Um, this was one of the cleanup sheets. Now, I think that's got quite a lot to do to clean it up and finish it off. However, for me, this is quite an interesting thing going on here. And I might lift that out. In fact, I'm going to lift this out. Because would I generate this design if I was actually creating... Um, a background? Probably not. Um, let's have a look, see if I can get a piece out of this. I don't like the tape marks, that's the thing that bothered me on this. However, I can play around slightly. That's interesting. Okay. Again, whatever wasted, nothing. If anything, I'm gaining because I'm working with scraps. So let's come up here again and have a little look. Is there something there? Not enough. Let's put that one to one side to be cut. And let's pull this one in. Right. For me, this side just didn't work. It was too much. I'd have to bring that back with white and start again. But some of this is absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure. Yeah. 
Yes, I think that is that. I'm going to take that out of there. I'm wondering whether I can get another one. If I could get two, then I could make... Actually, no. Let's see if I can get two ATCs out of this, because that would then give me a pair of ATCs, um, so that it's almost like a collection of ATCs. Um, when I swap ATCs, if I do swap them, which isn't very often, but I'm going to start doing that more in the future, um, I tend to swap two or three. Um, usually three, if I've got a set of three, I will swap. So these are the frames I use. Sorry, it's on a black. It's just it's just mount card that I've used and created those from. So put those to one side. Pencil goes away. And let's pull in the guillotine. <clears throat> All right, let's start with the smaller pieces first. Now, on my um, guillotine, I've already got marked my postcard sizes in little red dots there. That's because it's four and a quarter and five and three quarter. I always seem to struggle to remember those measurements, but I do know that two and a half and three and a half is my other measurement. So that's totally fine with me. So as an example, right, I know that's where I want the one line to be. So I will line that one line up. That's the pencil line, and I'm just going to cut one line because that will give me a 90 degree to work against. Right, and I come in and I'm going to double check. This is two and a half, so I'm going to make sure that I chop that off. This is three and a half that I need to be. So now we're going into the real measurements now. And just get that three and a half on that line. So that's three and a half. And I'll come in and I'll now measure my two and a half to trim it down. And then all I'll do is I'll come in with a soft rubber, a razor, whichever you want to call it, and just gently take out those lines. As you can see, they come off quite easily. Um, and then that, that will get backed onto a piece of card and it'll get worked further and that will be an ATC. So let's quickly go through the remainder of these. I'll use the same process. Now, the first thing I do is I don't go here and cut it because I may have lined things up on an angle um, for an interesting shape. So I tend to give myself a straight edge first. Then I know that this is three and a half. So if I line that edge, that line up against there, that'll give me my three and a half. Turn this round. So now I'm doing the true measurement which is two and a half. I'm ignoring my lines, remember. I'm not cutting on the lines. I'm, I use the first line as a guideline, see? So if I cut it to the lines I drew on here, it would be the wrong size. But now I've used my guillotine, or you could use a trimmer. You could even use a blade and a ruler or even a scissors. Just make sure that the lines you've drawn, if you're using a set of scissors, you need to make sure that this is two and a half by three and a half. That's if you will stay with the ATC format, right? I'm going to come in. This is one of my postcards, 2B. So let's just take that edge off so I can get it in here. So I now know that that edge is right. So I need this to be four and a quarter. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a slice off there. Right, so this is the five and three quarter dimension. And then I'm going to go and check that I've done this bit right, four and a quarter. I've got a little bit of a sliver to cut off there. So there you go. So now I've extracted a background uh, from a background, a postcard, and I've still got my ATC size one here as well. So let's just do this. So sorry if this is a little boring, but many, many, many of you keep asking me to share my processes with you. I am more than happy to share my processes with you because if... If there's something I've learned, when you watch someone else, it usually sparks an idea. And for me, that's that's the nice thing about sharing videos, is someone will see something I do. Maybe it'll inspire them to do something. See, just to raise the edges, and that's another ATC. Maybe it'll inspire them to do something, <clears throat> which is how I learn a lot of my stuff, is I will, I will come in. This is a postcard from a background, by the way. I maybe watch someone else create something and go, oh, I like that idea. I would do it this way, though. And then I'll play around with that idea. Right. So this needs to be four and a quarter. I'm going to just overshoot the margin just so I've got 
the right thing. Now I know that this is the right edge. So if I do five and three quarters, hold that down, and this needs to be four and a quarter. Hopefully I'm in shot for all of this, I do hope so. So there you go, I've now got a postcard background. That will be great for stenciling something onto, adding more stuff. We'll take a quick look at them before we finish. Right, I think this is the one that we put the ATCs on, isn't it? I have to be a bit careful. I did two ATCs out of this, so let's take that one off so I don't chop in half while I'm chopping the other one. Again, I usually line up with my first line, and that gives me a straight edge. Then I know this has to be three and a half, so I'm going to overshoot it slightly. And all the time I'm re-examining, this is two and a half, I'm re-examining my images as I'm going along, because there may be a section within that image that I go, oh, I really wanted to keep that bit. So that's two and a half. Is this three and a half? I think I haven't finished the line. There you go. So again, another ATC back. Erase it, mount, it, put it on a backing, and it's fine. Right, here's the one I was looking for. Um, what do I use to back my ATCs? Um, I usually use um, manila file folders. Um, there, you can get them in bulk from most places. I I like using them for. I use vanilla full file fo vanilla file folders for a lot of stuff. To be honest with you, so this is three and a half. Um, as far as postcards go, I normally back my postcards with um, white card. Um, just regular white card stock. If it's got dirty, if it's not got dirty, which a lot of time it does because I do painty processes, then if it's not got dirty, I won't back it because I usually work on a good card stock to start with. So this needs to be four and a quarter. And this needs to be five and three quarters. Um, so yes, that's what I do. I usually stick my backing on with a print stick. I have been known to put it on with matte gel medium, but to be honest with you, I normally just reach for my glue stick. I think that was the only one on there. I can't see any more lines, so let's just take that one out. Um, I usually just use a glue stick to put my backing on. I have been known, as I said, to use matte gel medium occasionally. Um, for me, it's more about the front of the card than the back of the card, but I do know people that collect ATCs like to have them um, looking good on the background, and the same is to be said for people who collect postcards. So I try to respect that and make sure that the back of my pieces of art are looking clean. Um, this was just a postcard. We've only got two more to go, guys. Um, I tried to do that also, anyone who collects postcards and ATCs and stuff like that usually would like them signed and dated. Um, so the backs of my ATCs, I normally date and sign, and if there's a title or a how many of how many, like it's one of six or one of set of three or something like that, I will... I will write that on the back. I date it, I sign it. As far as the postcards go, I don't tend to write too much on the back, but I tend to use my postcards more as things I send out to people. Right, give me a second, I need to cut this in half. Purely because I've got two ATCs up there. So right, um, let's just trim that down to that line actually. So hopefully this just gives some, some of you some thought as to how, how to maybe take what you've got that you think of as scraps and maybe utilise them and turn them into a starting point for postcards and ATCs. Um, and this is how I have so many on the go. Is that the right width? Yes, it is. And that's how I have so many of them on the go half the time is because I've literally come in and I made a load of them 
because I've been gel printing or I've been doing stencil work or painted work and I'll come in and I'll just rescue anything that would have hit the scrap bin to be honest. That's two and a half is there and that needs to be three and a half. Well this is a really interesting video of you just watching me cut card isn't it or cut paper but hopefully it's interesting to somebody. Let's chop that bit down a bit. Right, so this needs to be, what's the other end of it? There it is. So this needs to be three and three and a half, which is there. Sorry, I do tend to talk to myself. Um, this doesn't, I think I've done this wrong. Why do I think this feels wrong? I think I didn't cut it on a straight line. That bit should have been cut there, actually, a little bit more. Worst case scenario, I've just made another scrap. Right, this should be three and a half. Lucky it. Just that little corner needed coming off. This needs to be two and a half. And just make sure that other edge is also three and a half. Yeah, I rescued it. So that's given me another one of those. Right, down to the very last one, right. This one I join them really, really closely together. So I'm going to come in and just separate those before we start. <clears throat> okay, weird funky angle. So I'm going to come in and just take this off here. Now I know that's the right edge. So I'm going to come in and make sure it's two and a half. Make sure that's three and a half. And make sure this one is two and a half. So there you go, I've rescued out of an angle, I've now got this. Just double check the widths. Yep, I did do it right. That's that's my anxiety. It it tends to make me think I've done things wrong when actually I haven't done it wrong at all. It's just my mind playing tricks on me. So four and a quarter and five and three quarters. Okay, right, let's get rid of the, the noisy guillotine. Uh, let's put all of this, now all of this scrap stuff, guess what? Goes back into the scrap box, we'll live for another day. So, and this will become collage fodder, it will become maybe accent pieces or toppers on stuff, anything like that. So, out of all of what would normally have been scrap, um, now I've got some nice postcard bases. Something for my arty postcard fodder. Some of them might actually not even be adorned further. Like this one to me is quite interesting. I may go in and do some shading pencil work on that one. Can you see them? Are they close enough? Let's lift them up to you. So here you go. So I see there's quite interesting stuff going on in these. And I probably wouldn't have seen this detail unless I'd used those frames to help me focus in on different parts of my... Um, artwork like who knew that was hiding in there I think that's lovely I think if I put a tiny little seahorse or something in there that would be really cute or maybe an octopus tentacle um, again really nice lovely that one's crying out to be a seascape I think not sure what some of these are they will develop them what I do is I normally make my um, backgrounds and then I don't look at them for weeks on end and then I'll go back at them and look at them the next time and they'll they'll tell me what they're supposed to be. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that was fun. Um, where have I put the frames? So again, this is what I use to actually just create something to help me isolate pieces of art within a confusing background, if that makes sense. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to call off now and I will see you next time. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.